Hey guys, I'm just here with the uh, the video for my completed project. Um, I've done a few shorts on it already, but I'd really just like to go in depth on the uh, system overall. So I've got a uh, joystick and a D-pad from a GameCube controller right over here. Uh, original, or sorry, not original, but a third-party controller um, C uh, pad and A and B button from uh, from that third-party controller. And then uh, the original Game Gear start button, painted red. So uh, there's also the screen protector that I kind of handmade, not too well. Uh, it was kind of my first attempt at ever doing something like that. It, it's all, all right, you know, and it, it protects the screen itself, so it works for me. Uh, these two tack switches up here are the L and R buttons. They're not really too uncomfortable. Uh, I may shave them down just a little bit, but uh, for now, I mean, they're even now they're they're fine. You know, I got my, my one speaker down there uh, because it uses the original Game Gear audio amp. There's only one speaker, and uh, that's the headphone jack from the Game Gear audio amp. Even says volume with the uh, thing right there. And then uh, this is the uh, switch for the ZL. Um, if this is, uh, if you want this to be L to be used with the D-pad, because that's how some games are played then you can switch that to the uh, more outward, outward way, and it'll be L. And Z, the more common one, is why I put it over here, so that it didn't, doesn't get in the way when used with the joystick. I mean, it wouldn't even if it was over here, but it's just my way of thinking about it. These three buttons right here are for the screen controls, like brightness and contrast and stuff like that. Um... Some games are different than others, so that's why I decided to include those, and they're kind of centered there. This right here is the uh, rumble pack slash memory pack switch. So when it's to the left, I believe it's rumble, and when it's to the right, I'm pretty sure it's memory. I'm not 100% sure on that, but uh, it's one or the other. This is the R button. It's uh, by itself, you know, because you always use the R button with the A and B. And the C buttons, which are pretty comfortable down here. Um, you know, most games, I think all of them, in fact, uh, aren't. Uh, there's nothing wrong with having the C buttons below the A and B and save some space. Got the original Game Gear uh, power uh, switch right there, and then the original uh, AC adapter, but this is used for charging. And then I have. Uh, Reset switch for the N64, just in case uh, you use an EverDrive with this. I don't have an EverDrive, but uh, if I ever need it, if I ever get it one, I can use that reset switch to save games. These are just some uh, vent holes for cooling, so it doesn't overheat. Then on the bottom, I have some intake vent holes, so that it goes in and then out the top. And uh, a little strap I just put on there. Um, because I kept the two strap little posts from the Game Gear. I tried to keep as much from the Game Gear as possible. I'll put that there for now. So that's what it looks like from there. And you can see I even left the little cartridge right there. Where it says cartridge in. And the uh, serial number from the Game Gear in there. And that's the cartridge slot itself. These two little white things right there are for keeping the cartridge more secure in there so that it doesn't wiggle around and freeze the game. Um, so it's real solid in there. You got the uh, original Game Gear uh, screw posts with uh, official N64 um, security bits in there. And then the obviously the emblem from the N64 itself. <clears throat> so yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean... It's fully featured, except for no AV out, no controller ports. Uh, it's possible I could do that later on, but I highly doubt it, as I'd never use it. And I have other portables coming down the line that will, in fact, have that feature. So uh, I just want to give you a little bit of some size comparisons. So um, here's an original Game Boy. You know, original DMG brick. You know, it's a little smaller. 
than the Game Gear N64, but yeah, those were pretty big back in the day. I mean, they're even more big now. And then obviously it is the exact same size as an original Game Gear. Minus the um, cartridge pack. I call it the cartridge uh, backpack, but it is, you know, it is exactly the same. Um, other than the speaker moving and obviously the buttons and stuff. Yep. Except uh, to turn this on, you turn it to the right. Here is an original 3DS, or not an original, a new 3DS XL in dire need of a shell swap. I mean, but it is, you know, this isn't too big. And then a uh, GPD Win 4 that I recently added to my collection. I obviously prefer to play on that, but. I built this more as a hobby, not to play it. Sorry, I had to charge my phone. So, I don't play this as much as, like, my GPD, but I do play this. I built it more as a hobby, though, but I do play it on occasion. Um, so let me just uh, show you it working out. Put in Zelda first. Always do Zelda first. Turn the volume down, but it gets loud. But, I mean, I don't even need it that loud. So, that's just pretty cool. It's a cool system. It's cool that it was able to fit into a Game Gear. Um, there was a guy way back in the day that made one in a game year. Uh, his name was Evil Nod. It was called the In Gear 64. Um, and he really inspired me to do this. Um, his didn't have an internal battery pack though. And his cartridge kind of came out of the top like this. Backwards and kind of up out of the top a little bit. So um, I, did, I wasn't a fan of that. But it was, you know, it was still very cool. Um... So I wanted to go a step further than he did and, uh, you know, make the bezel and everything. Um, the color of the thing is actually just a primer, but it was because it was the closest thing I could match to the original N64 controller, which is right here, by the way. You know, here's it for comparison. Not too much bigger. Kill some Skulltilla or Style Children. Did you hear that here? That's my Rumble Pack. So yeah, the uh, to the left is the Rumble Pack. Sorry, kind of holding it on the kickstand. This cartridge. Uh, backpack kind of, you know, holds itself up. It's pretty cool. I had a feeling it would do that, and I was kind of hoping it would. But I just really like that's uh, and this is probably overkill, but that's four uh, rumble motors from a phone, uh, wired in each corner of the system. And the uh, reason I went for four was because on Amazon, uh, you can get ten of them for pretty cheap. I think it was like $15 for ten of them, and that's the minimum order. So uh, I was just like, well, if I'm going to buy, you know, that many, I'm not going to put one or two in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get all four of them, or at least four of them in there. I'm not going to put all ten in, but, you know. So that's a little bit of Zelda. Let me show you... 
some Star Fox 64 because it has a lot of rumble too and yeah see cartridge is not wiggling anywhere uh oh gotta clean this game Come on, camera. Listen to this rumble. Feels great. Yeah, these uh these little cheap car monitor uh for reverse cameras, they're they're cheap and effective. I know so I've heard some people say I should have like used an IPS screen or something. And I mean I would have if they were more available for this size and for a decent price. Um I'm gonna look into them, see what I can do uh for next time. But this is just perfectly fine for cheap effective, you know. I had to keep this thing cheap as cheap as possible anyway. Thankfully, I only had to use two N64s. Um, there was one, my first one, which uh, unfortunately died. You know, y'all that have been here for the entire uh, build had you, you would know that you know it, it died. It died unfortunately, but uh, you know I learned something from it, which is all you can hope for. Oh. Never claimed to be the best at Star Fox. Shows off the rumble motors real good though. Alright, let's switch to something else. Toy Story 2. That's a really fun one I had uh, growing up. It was really fun. I was a huge Toy Story fan. It's one of those ones I gotta clean. Also, it has the longest uh, startup process. Oh, gotta switch to the controller pack. I don't have any saves anyway, but you can see what I'm talking about. This game takes forever to boot into. But it's a very fun platformer. That's where you would switch to rumble if I remembered to. I'm going to go race. Uh, I can't remember his name. The race car. Is it just RC? It might just be RC.
I prefer this version of this game over the PS1. It just has better music. For some reason it was they had a different soundtrack entirely. I mean even though this one did have the uh the cutscenes that I was skipping through earlier, it wasn't I mean they're not really cutscenes on this version, but they're uh they're actual clips from the movie on the other one. Uh Smash Bros. This is a reproduction cart. Uh you could tell by the big R trademark. <clears throat> See so yeah, how that's a little trademark R? That's a big one. So that's how you can tell it's fake. Um, but this one sometimes does not like to boot. So let's see if it does. Nope. Not today. This is a reproduction too, but never had a problem with it booting. I guess it's just today. And this is to uh, demonstrate the expansion pack functionality. Hold on here. Story skip on. I'm not watching that. Not watching that intro. This is uh, probably the first game I ever played for the N64. Um, I was five when I got my first N64. Me and my brother shared it. Uh, we got the Jungle Green N64. Um, and that was pretty great. Then he showed me Zelda and I was hooked. But yeah, this is a reproduction cart also. You can tell because whenever it came damaged when it was shipped to me. Um, and uh, I just didn't care because it was a reproduction. I mean, you know, who cares? I'm going to get a real copy anyway. But uh, I'm starting a collection and I want all my stuff to be complete in box. So I didn't want to buy a loose Donkey Kong 64 to test expansion pack. But I also didn't want to spend uh, complete in box prices at that moment so I just got a reproduction how do I dive again okay yeah there it is Z Well done. Sorry about that. My phone died, so uh, I had to recharge my phone. Uh, but there's one more game I want to show you all running on this portable. It's a uh, Ocarina of Time ROM hack, the Sealed Palace. Uh, you know, this ROM runs on original N64 hardware, so figured I would show it off. I haven't played too much of this ROM hack yet. I do know this song to get out of the main dungeon. First dungeon, I mean. I 
but yeah, uh, in the future, uh, I will be making more portables. I recently decided on my next project. It's going to be a, a G-Boy, just a portable Wii. Um, and uh, so that's going to be coming uh, within the next couple of weeks. I'll start making update videos for that. I gotta get a 3D printer first, which I'm uh, in the process of. I've already picked one out. Uh, so once I get started with that, I'll start giving updates. That's gonna be nothing, uh, nothing really different about it, uh, uh, apart from. Nothing's going to set it apart from other G-Boys. It's pretty much just going to be your standard build. But I'm hoping it's going to get me more into 3D printing for future projects. Because I do want to make another N64 that's uh, more of a community build. You know, like open source possible type build. So this is my N64 portable, and uh, it's called the Mercury 64, off of the uh, project that the Game Gear was uh, named after, Project Mercury, Mercury. so Mercury 64. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed uh, this whole project of mine and the journey that we did for it. Uh, Y'all really helped me out with... Uh, keeping me motivated to get it done couldn't have done it without y'all's help so uh if you like more projects like this please subscribe like the video share it around and uh i really appreciate y'all we'll see you next time